the rename command is a great command if you need to turn some of your column fields into a more human readable context or if those fields contain characters that Splunk doesn't like for, for, uh, for example the period or if you've got data types that you're trying to combine two different data sources and the fields from one data source and the other don't match. So let's give it a good example of this. Let's get it going. We'll go with in our good old lame training index. And I want to rename the source IP as source IP. I'm going to put a period there and that's going to make things uh, so I can, sorry, I said a period. I'm going to put double quotes here and that allows me to put a space in between on the field so it reads better. And then I have to, if I go table source IP, this will actually not return any results. I now need to use the name that I have called it. If I do that, I now have a nice little human a nice human readable for uh, field name there, source IP. But I did this intentionally. I do not recommend that you put a rename command so early in your Splunk. As a general rule, do all of your manipulation and then at the very back bottom, put your stuff in there. And see, I can actually do source IP here. The table is a source IP, but because I renamed it down here, it'll actually display as the nice little space in there. Um, if you do not want a space, if you're not putting a space in your your f new field name, you do not need to use double quotes, so we can see it done like that. So that's the basic principle behind uh, renaming a source IP, uh, renaming a field. Sometimes, let's say you've got uh, id.org h, and this is because you're using JSON or something in your your log. And what you're going to find is that you what this is the parent and this is the child and the JSON and you might have a bunch of ID dot stuff. Splunk does not like that. And if you do like a stats count by it'll it won't it won't work. So you want the easiest thing to do is just to rename id.orgh as something else. And now use it throughout the rest of your command. So as I said, there's always exceptions. If you're trying to get rid of the dot in there, you might want to use it up at the beginning of your command as early as possible so that you can start using this field and the rest of your stuff. But I've ran into this, it's caused me a lot of hassle, these, these dot fields. And so if they're in your data, get them out with a nice little rename command. The very last case in which you'd want to do, maybe I want to do source IP equals, and I have like a list of 100 source IPs that I want to look for, and I only want the Lacan log associated with that. I don't want to write 100 different fields in there. So you can use a lookup. And here's an example of my little lookup file. I've got an IP field, host name, purpose. And so it's kind of telling me about my inventory. And what I want to do is I want to see if any of my source IPs are any of these guys here. So. The basic syntax behind that is you use a subsearch. Uh, look below in the link. I'll give more details on how to get tutorials on this. But the basic premise is you use an input lookup, and I can actually I've already written it here. So input lookup. We're going to use the input lookup IP inventory .csv, and we want the IP field. But the problem with the IP field is we're looking for source IP, and this is going to return back a big list of uh, this would be IP equals that first value IP, or IP equals that second value. Well, there are no IP fields. The field we're looking for is destination IP, or in this case, I'm going to do source IP. And so I'm going to rename this IP field so that it will look for, uh, instead of looking for the IP, it's going to look for source IP. If I run that, I'm going to get a result back. And what do you know? There's the source IP 10.0.0.12. And that matches up right there with that. And all I got was the one field back. And basically, that's that's the principle. When you have two different data sources and you're trying to match them on one field and those fields don't match, use a rename. And that'll help you put them back together and allow you to uh, link your data based off that. I hope that helps you on your journey from becoming a uh, lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.